Welcome to the Focolari Word of Life podcast for September 2023. My name is Nick Chanferani and I'll be your host. The Word of Life is a phrase chosen from Scripture each month and shared around the world and that we're all invited to live. The experiences that we're about to listen to in this episode relate to the Scripture phrase, Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Taken from Psalm 145, verse 2. Today's experiences are by Kathleen Masters from Chicago, who shares how she sustained a friend during a difficult moment. Susan O'Gara from Florida tells us about a seemingly disastrous car trip and how she ended up being a blessing to people she encountered along the way. And after a challenging relationship with a friend at school, Emma Alonso from Gainesville, Florida, shares how time was a healer. Have you ever stopped in the middle of what you're doing and sensed the wonderment of your life? Have you ever experienced the majesty of the mountains, trees, animals, or even the buildings surrounding you? To experience these things in their fullness is to be close to the personal love that God has for you. If you can just pause in your busy and consumed life to take a breath and realize that everything you see is an expression of God's love, you'll be more likely to give praise to the one who created it all. Hi, Kathleen. It's such a joy to have you on our podcast today. Great. Good. Thank you. I so appreciate you asking me, and I tell you how much I appreciate what you are doing with Folklore Media, with the podcast, and, and others I know who appreciate that so much. Why, thank you for that, Kathleen. I appreciate it. And before you share your experience, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? So um, we have three adult children. The pilot who travels the world our other two children, uh, our daughters, are uh, married and each have uh, children. Thank you, Kathleen. It's great to see how the family's growing. So, Kathleen, we're now anxious to listen to your experience. I am an occupational therapist and I have a tendency to have ideas, a lot of resources. And this friend finds it more difficult to um, keep jobs because of her age and worried that as she approached retirement, all of her life, especially her um, housing situation, and just didn't feel like her retirement would cover her needs. And I tried to look at a variety of things to help her and recognize her as a you know a person on her own. She did take the step to apply for a subsidized senior residence that I knew about. And she did take some small steps with the idea of ultimately selling that so she could downsize to this senior residence. I realized that this time consuming process was kind of frustrating for me. Um, but I looked at her anew to see the fear and anxiety that she did have and to love her in the situation she was in and to accompany her. She did providentially get a second chance to be offered another apartment about a year later. What a gift this was from God. <laughs> She clearly felt the love of being taken into this Franciscan residence as the love of God for her. It's created so much more security. And she feels free to help the others like she has been helped. And all of these setbacks and choices have made her so much stronger. And for me too, as, as this word of life, like when you look at this point of the psalm, Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Beautiful. Thank you for joining our podcast today. It has been a great pleasure having you with us. And uh, I hope we can connect again very soon. 
Great. Good. Thank you. Welcome to our podcast, Susan. Oh, and I am so thankful that you asked me. I have a dear friend with me who is blessing me with her presence. And what is the name of your friend? Patty Van Austin. Hi, Patty. Hi. Thanks for being there. It's so great to have you with us, too. So glad to be here and to be with Susan today. Well, thank you both for introducing yourselves and joining our podcast. And Susan, before you share your experience, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? I live in St. Petersburg, Florida, the Paris of the South, and um, I'm a speech language pathologist, retired, also have done acting. I enjoy that as a quote hobby, but it's also very fulfilling. Thank you for that, Susan. In your experience, you mentioned the word Mariapolis. For those who don't know, that is a summer gathering of the Focolare, sort of a retreat. And then Focolarinas, which you also refer to, are members of the Focolare living in a community. So go ahead now and share your experience. I want to talk about my trip to and from the Mariopolis in Atlanta, which was over Labor Day weekend. So I first thing I thought, well, let me see if I can bring somebody with me, you know, save them gas. And I was so blessed. Three of the Focolarinas from the North Florida picked them up and off we go on I-75, which is a huge interstate. And then my car, um, all the lights, all the red lights that you can imagine just lined up across the dashboard. And then my accelerations wouldn't, I couldn't accelerate. So luckily we were in the right lane and we pulled over on the shoulder. I worried, oh my gosh, there's four senior ladies here. What if the tow truck doesn't have room for us and he has to take the car away and we're left standing on the interstate. But I just had a, such a sense of calm with them with me. Big, big guy arrives with the tow truck and he can stuff all four of us into his cab. And uh, so I always try to make myself one with anybody that's working for me or I'm working with. So I was thinking, what can I do? Because he seems like a real tough guy with tattoos. And I saw a Marlboro package on the retweeting us. And I said to them, I mean, it was the Holy Spirit. You're our Marlboro man. And he then opened up and shared his, a lot of, you know, very details about his life and his problems and his children. And I felt like I really knew him and he was really helpful. And he, anyway, so that, and then we get to a Nissan dealer. And of course I have a Toyota. It's Friday afternoon, the three day weekend. And he says, well, I can't even look at your car until Tuesday. And then, um, so I'm thinking, oh my gosh, but we rented a car and the lady that rented us the car that was attached to the Nissan deal was so nice. She just got us a great vehicle. And so we arrive at after dark at the hotel and there's this lovely young guy at the desk named Antonio and we made ourselves one with him. And so the next day when we were coming into the hotel after the, the whole day's activities, um, I just felt, I have to sing this song. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You're the nicest thing that anyone's ever done for me. I said, let's all sing this to him when we come in the hotel. <laughs> and we march in singing a song. And he like is blown away. And uh, his manager comes out. Her eyes are bulging out of her head. And she says, I've got you all on camera. And I'm going to show this at the staff meeting. <laughs> So it was like we were letting her know that he does such a wonderful job. And then God was so good to me because they found out in the afternoon it was a water pump that needed repair. They had to get a part from Toyota. They said might be done by five on Wednesday. And I thought, oh, my gosh, I'm going to have to find a place to stay in Atlanta. And God blessed me again. Then uh, headed home and more blessings occurred. And then I thought, who else can I visit? And there is a retired woman in her 90s who used to be in our word of life in St. Pete, and she's now living in Ocala by herself in an in a, in a independent living. Very few people ever get over to visit her. So I called her, and it was further out of my way. It was going back north for about a half hour north. But I called her, and I got to go visit her, and she was so thankful, and I was so thankful. God works in amazing ways when things that you think are going to be problems, if you love and if you reach out, it was just an adventure. Thank you, Susan. I was impressed how you found a way to love both the tow truck driver and the motel clerk. 
It was truly a way of giving praise to God. Thank you, Nick. Welcome, Emma. It's a delight having you on our podcast. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. Emma, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? I'm from Florida, um, near the Gainesville area. I moved here about three years ago from Miami, so I'm a native uh, Miami and born and raised. Um, so I'm 17, so I'm still in high school. I'm in my senior year. Uh, this year has been pretty crazy. I've been applying to a lot of colleges. Um, I think I'm probably going to be majoring in journalism. Well, I wish you well with that. And so we're anxious now to listen to your experience. About actually sometime last year, uh, I was... I was, I was best friends with this, uh, this amazing person. And unfortunately, she moved away, so that was sad. But um, I ended up being friends with somebody else. And uh, unfortunately, this person was, she was very kind at first. But as like the, the more that you go into the friendship, it was, it was getting extremely toxic. And I feel like what I want to talk about today in this experience is like boundaries and healing and like inner healing, outer healing, um, everything that like, I feel like a lot of teenagers are going through right now. Um, and so in this friendship, I felt like I was, um, I was being drained, you know, it was, it was, and, and, and I, I tried my best to, to love and to, you know, put myself out there and be the first to love. But um, unfortunately, it was just getting a little bit too much for me and also the people around me. So I took my initiative to step away from that friendship, unfortunately, and take some time to myself and like rethink what I was doing with that friendship and where it was going. And like, unfortunately, uh, this person was going through a lot of turmoil in their life and they needed people to be with them. And I was with them for as long as I could possibly be without subjecting myself to more negativity. So I feel like identifying that you're in a toxic relationship or that you're in a toxic friendship is the first step to healing and also being able to help that person better. So what I did is I stepped away from the friendship. I took a breath. I reevaluated my priorities. I said, okay, is this really the direction that I want the friendship to keep going in? So I stepped away. She stepped away as well. We took a long break. And actually the other day, um, we actually have a class together this year now. And on the first day of classes, I saw her and she looked so much better than, and I could feel it in her energy. I could feel it and everything. And I felt completely changed as well. So to like, to be able to see her step into that new era of herself, to step into that new vitality of her was amazing. And in that class, we reconvened, we said hi, we went back, you know, to, hey, like, what's going on? You know, what's up? How was your summer? And it was incredible, because there was such a change. And there was such like a concrete growth in us in both of us, that I don't think we ever truly could have achieved if we had stayed in that toxic friendship, along with all the other people that we were with. Thanks for sharing your experience with us, Emma. It's truly a blessing and I would say reason to give praise to God for how things worked out. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much for having me. So thank you for joining us today. I hope you have been inspired by the wonderful stories shared. And I look forward to being with you again next month. A special thanks to Tom Rowley who helped me produce this podcast and for his introduction. To listen to a reflection and commentary on the Word of Life, just go to the previous episode of this podcast. I invite you to join me each month for new episodes. You can also read additional experiences in Living City Magazine. Please consider making a donation to Focolare Media so that we can continue producing inspiring podcasts. Visit give.focolare.us that's G-I-V-E dot F-O-C-O-L-A-R-E dot U-S. And look for the Focolare Media tab. Thank you in advance for your support. Bye for now, and God bless. The Word of Life is translated into approximately 90 different languages and dialects. 
reaching millions worldwide through print, radio, TV, and other media. There are special versions for children and teens as well, which you can find at livingcitymagazine.com. This podcast has been brought to you by Focolare Media.